Okay, so the last time we covered the story of the first three Prince of Persia games being the Sands of Time, Were a Written and the Two Thrones. And this time we'll cover the Prince of Persia 4 and the Forgotten Sands. These two games are not related to the first three so you don't necessarily need to watch the first video to understand this one, but I encourage you nonetheless. And for now, let's continue the story. After the previous events, the prince starts to embrace the life of an adventure and wander around the world. At one point, he goes to a land where he's caught in a sandstorm and searching for Farah. No, not that Farah. We have a donkey named Farah now. Probably something didn't go well between Farah and the prince, so he named a donkey after her. So nice. While searching, a girl bumps into him. The girl is chased by two guards which wants to capture her. The prince fights them and the girl learns as well who is Farah. The prince follows her to a bridge and the guards throw some rock, destroying it. And the prince almost falls but is caught by the girl who appears to have magic powers. The girl tells the prince that she needs to go to a temple and reveals her name, which is Elika. When they reach the temple, the prince asks what's in that temple. Well, if there's no gold, why is this place so secure? It's the prison that holds Araman. Araman? <laughs> All right. It seems that Armin is still within the tree in the middle of the room. Elka's father appears telling that he cannot lose her again and starts fighting the prince. In a ranged moment, he destroyed the seal, freeing all the darkness what was kept there. The temple begins to collapse and monsters start rising from the muddy darkness around it, and it seems that Elika have the power to damage those creatures. When they exit the temple, they notice that everything was already corrupted by the darkness. But things are not completely lost. Elka reveals that Armin cannot escape just yet. It's just partially free and the temple can still contain him. There are four additional seals in different areas who feed the temple with life energy. So the mission is to remove the corruption and restore the land around the seal. But Elika receives a vision about her father making a deal with Armin and four monsters. All you must do. Every area is guarded by one of these monsters, so they need to defeat them in order to restore the land. Elika is weak and each time she restores a seal, so they need to gather light seeds so she will have enough power for the next seal. We even learned about Omaz who appears to have created the temple, and from the temple Elika draw her power. Omaz and Armin are brothers, and in the beginning only Omaz and Armin coexisted along one another. His brother learned how to convert the heart of humans with his dark powers. Due to an ease of dark intent in human hearts, the table quickly turned in Armin's favor, with him gaining more power from each followers that he gained. Understanding his power growing from his followers, Omaz began striking them down before they they could further empower Armin. This strategy succeeded on an extent and by the time Omaz tired only a few Armin selected were left. The hunter, the concubine, the warrior and the alchemist. The four monsters. Using the last of his power he sealed the four corrupted followers and Armin into the tree of life. The prince and Elika continue to restore the seals and fighting the four monsters and after a while they return to the temple where they found some sign that gives Elika new powers in order to reach new places and the rest of the seals. After they gain the first power Elika father shows up. Elika, please, I did this for you. The task of our people is past. The tree grows weak. Are those your words? Or Armin's? Where was Ormas when your mother was taken from us? Where was he in your hour of need? Elika, I am your father! I am your king! Elika reveals her past to the prince. Her mother died and then Elika died as well. 
Her father could not handle his grief and made a deal with Armin. He freed Armin who rescued Elika in return, but he unleashed the darkness by that. The prince is shocked to learn that Elika was dead and starts to understand her father's actions. They go to restore more of the land and along the way they have a lot of conversation and they start to become friends. After that they go back to the temple to gain a new power but they meet again Elika's father. You shall have no more. No! I have lost her. Father? Lost. Gone from us. I'm here. We can stop this. If you come, if you help us heal the land. He starts to become corrupted too. Slowly Armin takes control over him. The next time they encounter him he doesn't even speak. So he is in a much worse shape with every moment that passes. Finally, after the prince and Elika cure all the land and defeat all the four monsters, they can return to the temple to seal Armin. But when they get there the interior of the temple is completely dark and Elika's father appears fully transformed into a monster this time. Armin have taken the full control over him. Elika have enough of this and she starts attacking her father. With the help of the prince they win the battle but Armin takes the lead and transforms into a giant monster. Elika and the prince use the power they gain and the seal around to weaken Armin until he swallows both of them but Elika uses the power from the interior destroying his body and she uses the last light that is needed to seal Armin her own life. The temple and the whole place return to life. The prince carries Elika's body to the grave in front of the temple. He is angry about what happened but he decided to leave her to rest and continue his adventure. But there is another possibility. Prepare for this one because it will be a very weird ending. So the prince don't really like the idea of Elika being dead so he makes the same mistake as her father. He destroyed the four new seals with his sword and then the main tree and he take a light from the tree bringing back to revive Elika. She asks why, but the prince gives no response and carry her into the distance and the temple is destroyed and Armin is completely free now, coming from the dust behind. <laughs> but wait because the situation is much worse than this, we have even a DLC. So they go to a building nearby to have a break because they were followed by Armin and his monster. Elika is extremely mad at the prince and he slaps him. He tries to defend his choice by saying that Armin will escape anyway at some point, so if she is alive with all her powers they might have a chance to eliminate completely Armin. Armin. But of course Elika doesn't even want to talk to the prince. Now that army is free all his powers and monsters are much stronger and his power increase continuously and Elika's father is now fully one of the army's followers. The prince tries many many times to even talk to Elika but she barely responds and even when she does is a pissed off straight up answer. They find out that the place where they are is a small city where a mouse followers live so they try to advance but the whole place is corrupt and all the four army main followers are back. Well not the real swan because they are dead but some puppets that look like them shape and control by Armin. They need to escape quickly from this place because the corruption grows too much. Armin tries to trap them there so he can kill Elika, the one person who has the power to kill or imprison him. The prince tries to convince Elika to run to other places but she assures the prince that Armin will follow them everywhere so a safe place doesn't really exist. On the way out they fight a lot of monsters but at the exit they have a few fights with Elika's father, the final one being at the throne room where they push him into some spikes killing him but not for too long because he just reformed back and they use that chance to escape and finally reaching the exit where they have a final conversation we're through i think we're clear i couldn't heal him Armin was too strong just because he's growing stronger doesn't mean if i couldn't stop him now how can i ever hope to Armin is free and he will only grow more powerful We have to get out of here. If we cross the desert, there's a city two, three days from here. Or there's a port. It's further, but we could cross the sea, find somewhere further away. Go where you will. May your maws watch over you. Elika, you can't do this alone. I know. That is why I must find my people. Elika! Elika!
and that's the ending a very weird one like i said and people are mad at ubisoft because of this armin is free and grows stronger elika's only hope is to find omar's followers to help her to find armin and the prince i guess he just goes home for the sake of this video we'll just assume that elika being dead and armin sealed is the canon ending or just elika find her people and kill armin so we could have a happy ending or at least a decent one but we still have a problem the prince never finds Farah, the donkey and at the final credits we can find the text saying in loving memory of Farah." so the donkey is probably dead that's what i call a truly bad ending not even Farah is spared from this disaster but for now we finally arrive at the final adventure the prince has <laughs> The events of the Forgotten Sands take place between the events of the Sands of Time and Warrior Within, in that seven years gap. The prince go to visit his brother Malik who has been tasked by his father Sharaman to guard one of their territories, who in the past belonged to the King Solomon, and there was a vault room where a powerful weapon is hidden, so oftentimes that city is attacked by the neighbor armies. So Malik was sent there because he is a great tactician and leader so maybe the enemy will fear to attack with him around. But of course that doesn't work with everyone so they are still under attack. At the same time the prince is sent to visit his brother so he may learn how to become a great leader like his brother. But when he arrives he sees that Malik is attacked and rushes to see his brother and help him. Malik and his men hold the enemy for a while but they are outnumbered so he and three guards go to the vault to release that power and defeat the enemy with it. The prince follows his brother until he catch his attention. You've picked a bad time for a visit. I would have said you've picked a bad time for a war. Well, next time I expect you, I'll tell my enemies not to invade. But they are interrupted by the enemy so they will meet again in the Solomon's vault. When they meet at the vault, the prince tries to warn Malik to not free the army locked there and just retrieve. But Malik has no other options. Almost all his men are already dead, so he used the key and opened the seal. The key is pushed back and both brothers take a half of the key. Only some sand is pouring out from the seal, but from the sand, skeleton-like monster are rising, transforming everything they touch in sand statue and the elephant statue above fall apart and reveals a monster face. The sand starting pouring even more from the statue and a ton of monster rising and from there something much even bigger comes. A giant monster who appears to be the leader of the army. The prince and Marika are separate in this disaster and on the way out the prince sees a strange water door and enters. In the middle of that place he sees a fountain and the person starts forming from the water. The person tells the prince that she is a djinn and her name is Razia. She was the guardian of the waters and a big ally to the king Solomon himself. And with her and others help they seal that army away. Razia tells the prince the history behind the seal. That army did not belong to King Solomon. It was sent to destroy him. The army was formed from the desert sand itself. It is a disease. The more sand it touches, the more soldiers it will create. If you do not trap it quickly, it will cover the world. The only way to stop the army is by reuniting the two halves of the key that are in possession of Malik and the prince. Once the both halves are put together, the army will be sealed back. Before the prince goes to find Malik, Razia gives the prince the power to rewind time for a few seconds so that he may have a better chance and warns him to not fight Ratash, the leader of the army, the big monster they saw in the vault, because they have no chance to defeat him. So the prince goes after Malik. He can safely kill the monster he encounters along the way because the half of the key is protecting him from transforming into a sand statue and even absorb the monster after they are defeated, making both Malik and the prince stronger with each enemy killed. They meet on two separate balconies and the prince informs Malik how to seal the army. We have to stop the creatures that escaped the seal. Most of them are headed for the fortress. If I can close the gates, that will keep them from overrunning the countryside. From there, I'll have to find a way to re-imprison them all. I know a way. I have the other half of your medallion. If we reunite the pieces, it will seal the army away again. How do you know that? It's complicated, but I think it will work. These creatures are turning all of my men into statues. I think these medallions are protecting us. If you let go of your half, you're in danger. If we're going to reunite the pieces, I want you standing next to me. Meet me at the gates. 
On the way, the prince encounters Ratash, creating other more powerful creatures, so traversing that area will not be an easy task. But the prince succeeded in defeating the monster and finds Malik again. They work together to close the gate so the army will not advance beyond the city. They kinda did that, not exactly as they planned, but the gate is closed nonetheless. But now the prince can reach his brother. And they even have a fight because Malik starts to feel good gaining power from the army. We need to reunite the medallion! Wait there until I find a way up! What's your hurry? The army is trapped! I can kill them one by one! Gain their power! Do you hear yourself? This army sucked the life from your people! And you won't stop it because it makes you feel strong! We can end this now! Throw me the medallion! Throw me your half! If you care nothing for power, let me reunite the scene! <laughs> As I thought. The prince noticed that Malik has changed, so now he don't have too much trust in his brother, so he wants to be the person who reunites the medallions. He finds another water door and speaks with Razia about this. Razia explains to the prince that by killing a lot of monsters they will start to become corrupted by the power. The prince was protecting from this effect when Razia blessed him, but Malik on the other hand is not. So he slowly becomes more and more power hungry. Razia tells the prince to take the other half of the medallion by force or he will have to fight his brother. She gives the prince a new power and he goes to find Malik. They finally meet side by side and the prince tries to convince his brother to give up the medallion. But he doesn't want that because now he believes that the prince will take it not to seal the army but to gain more power. They have a little fight and Malik leaves and shuts the door. And after that the prince is spotted by Ratash. He managed to escape but now Ratash decides to go after an easier target. That being Malik. So the prince goes to save him. He encounters both of them fighting but Malik is smashed to a window so now the prince has to fight Ratash. With his new power he managed to keep up and even almost defeat him. But Malik's come back and deals the finishing blow to Ratash and absorbs him. But something has gone wrong. The seal has been broken and Malik appears to be more powerful all of the sudden. The prince goes to find and talk to Razia in hope she will explain what happened. But Razia informs that Malik can no longer be saved. Your brother did not kill Ratash. Ratash has killed your brother. What? No, that's not what happened. It is not what you saw, but it is what happened. A jinn will not be killed by any ordinary sword. This is why I warned you not to fight Ratash. His power has simply found another body. Your brother. Before long, Ratash will control him. The prince doesn't want to believe that and tells her that his brother will not let Ratash to take control over him. But even if that happens, Malik has to die no matter what, because now with the seal broken, the only way to defeat the army is finding a special sword and kill Ratash for real. But now that he possesses Malik, that means the prince has to kill his own brother in order to save everything. The prince doesn't want to do that but Razia managed to convince him and she guides the prince to the King Solomon's tomb. Now every time the prince encounters Malik, he doesn't even answer to his brother and with the medallion that absorbed the power of the army, he starts transforming into Ratash himself. The prince has to fight his own brother now, whether he likes it or not. It was a tough fight because Ratash have taken full control over Malik now. He even speaks in that weird language. At the end of the fight Malik destroys a chunk of that place and the prince goes to the Jin city to find the sword. Razia helped him to traverse the ruins and he eventually gained the sword. Part of Malik is still alive. I hope he will forgive me for this. He brings the sword to Razia and she fuses it with it. Now the prince is ready to face Ratash. The only problem is that he has transformed into a much bigger and more powerful creature, and Razia powers are drained by the army. So the only way to damage Ratash is by hitting the seal on his chest. After several hits, the prince stab Ratash in the seal, killing him, and the army is destroyed alongside with him. The people transform into a sand statue and reverse back to normal. But Malik died as well with Ratash. And Razia was killed too. The prince returned the sword in the Jin city and left Razia to rest and he goes back home, telling his father the bad news. A truly 
sad ending. I want to say just one last thing in the end, that being if you like this video you sure want to see the full story, so check the link in the description to see the full video with all the 5 games and the complete timeline. Other than that, have a good day and see you next time, bye bye.